Welcome Bishop Dag Hewitt Mills. Hallelujah. 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 Father, thank you for today and your great blessing you give to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and we are discussing or preaching about defending yourself. And in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, the Bible tells us that we must put on the whole armor of God uh, and protect ourselves from onslaughts of creatures that can see us, but we cannot see them. And their modus operandi is a little hidden from us. How they operate, how they work, but we know they have influences, they deceive, they lie, they push, they prod, and they work through people. Perhaps I would say to you that the best way you can see a devil working in your life is from a living human being. A living human being. What a living human being can do to you is sometimes what a devil is doing. That is why Jesus said, one of you is a devil. So it's like, literally, your behavior is like if the devil was to take up a human form. That's it. You are there practicing. So many things people do are what a devil does. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So we must be ready to overcome and we must put the devil on the run. We can't be defending all the time. So there are different things you are supposed to do. Have your loins get about with truth. Okay? Telling yourself the truth and being a peddler of the truth is one of the main things. And it's the first. It's the first. It's the first big thing. Truth. All right? Now, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, I just want to stay a bit on the truth. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, if, if you are God has called you to the ministry, and I'm preaching about the ministry shamelessly. If you don't want to hear about the ministry, I think you should go to another church. All right? Now, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Now, but have done what? The first thing when you go to the ministry is renouncing hidden things of dishonesty. Yes. You see, and you, you notice that many people who want to be in the ministry, want to serve God, don't realize that hidden things, hidden things of dishonesty must first be cleared out hidden things. First of all, that is hidden. Uh, people don't know. And nobody knows. Or one or two people who don't matter know. But those who matter don't know. Do you see? Yes. So we renounce hidden lives. And when Adam and Eve sinned, the first thing they did was to go into hiding. So anything that you do in hiding, do you see, you have to ask yourself whether it's compatible with the ministry. So we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Now dishonest, what does dishonest mean? Can somebody check what it means to be honest or dishonest? I don't, I don't think we know what is the meaning of dishonesty. Maybe to help us. But, and they're not walking in craftiness. Dishonest means dishonorable, shameful, indecent, wanting in honesty. 
wanting in honesty, void of integrity, disposed to cheat or defraud, not trustworthy as a dishonest man. Do you see? Huh? Characterized by fraud. Forgive. It's not a good word at all. And what about honest? What does it mean to be honest? Because dishonest is meaning something. Maybe honest will also mean something different. Honesty. Decent. Do you see? Honorable. Suitable. Or even those who studied English are surprised. <laughs> Characterized by integrity or fairness. Straight. Forwardness in conduct, thought, and speech. Truthful. Sincere. Free from fraud. Fraud guile or duplicity duplicity is two lives one life is known one life is unknown like we leave church and everybody thinks you are going home but you are not going home yes yes Everybody thinks you are somewhere, but you are not there. Yes. And because a mobile phone can answer in different places, and it's the same voice, but you can be on the seventh floor or the third floor. You get what I'm saying? You use that mobile to deceive. Are you, are you, oh yeah, I'm in town. You are not in town. Know where you are. So I said, oh, I'm, oh yeah, I'm at whatever. You are not. Duplicity. Duplicate. So I'm just saying that right at the outset of ministry, See, we have received this ministry. We have renounced hidden things that are not straightforward. If you want to do well, and if you don't, you open wide, wide up. So everybody who has this duplicate, duplicated life, duplicity, hidden things, God is speaking to you so that your life is clear. Yes, your life is clear. Now, not walking in craftiness. Craftiness, you can also check craftiness, uh, the people, but you see that it's like the more dishonest your life is, the more crafty you must be. Yes. The more good at acting. You know, I was watching a film once. The person asked the other person, you should get a job at Hollywood. I mean, they were acting. <laughs> Is it because you are good at acting? Wow. Yes. So you get a job at Hollywood or Nollywood because you are good at acting. All right? Dexterity in devising and effecting a purpose. Cunning. Artifice. Stratagem. Yes. Craftiness. The, 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 the definition itself needs explanation. So, better get another dictionary, please. Get a basic dictionary, okay? We can't understand all this. We have to explain dexterity and all these cunning, artifice, stratagems, what have you. Aha. Uh-huh. Skill in deception. Slyness. You can see that this is a dark character. Sly. You never know what the person is up to. You never know what the person is up to. You think the person is here, but the person is somewhere else. Sly. No, never let anybody give you such a nickname like Sly. It's not a good... Yeah, a lot of Sylvester's are called Sly. I, I don't think you accept that. It's like almost calling you crafty. 
rather crafty or sly. Now, since we have received ministry, we are disbanding hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by what? Manifestations of the truth. You see, there are things that are manifestations of truth. After a while, you see that oh, the person is telling the truth. It's called manifestations of truth. And by manifestations of truth, you recommend yourself. People realize that you were telling the truth. When I told people, give whatever so that we will buy this or we'll build a church, after some that manifestation of the truth that the building that they were given is there. Somebody has risked his life to travel there to go and dedicate it. And those are people dedicating the church. It, after a while, you see, you can see this building is in Zambia. It's in Mozambique. It's here. It's a manifestation of the truth which recommends you to people's innermost conscience that this thing is genuine. And you have to do things that are manifestations of truth that recommend you to the conscience of people. And they know in their depth of their heart that this thing is true. And all of us need that. Yes. So that's why those who have specialists of sitting at the back, specialists of being in the midst of the trees, specialists of always having a shady, cloudy, mystical something about you, is not a good thing. You may think you are cleverer than everybody, faster than everyone, craftiness. But in the end, it opens you up to evil spirits. I'm just talking about evil spirits, not about anybody. Just that like evil spirits gaining access to people. So you see that such a person who has hidden things of dishonesty and craftiness becomes exposed to more types of evil because they never come alone. Other evils come. That's why HIV is associated with immorality, but then it's associated with sickness. It's also associated with serious disease. It's associated with poverty. It's associated with death. So it's like a number of things come in. It looks at like first like one thing, then it becomes another and another and another until there's a whole conglomerate. Are you there? Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. But I hope you people are getting this and becoming more afraid of this type of thing because I think, you know, you know, depend on the culture, they are, you are like this. You see, I mean, the diff- I don't know if I'm right, but the difference between a Nigerian and a Ghanaian is that Nigerian will be quite clear what they are doing. And the Ghanaians, we are like this, doing all the same things. It's like you can't see what he's doing, but he's doing it. He's doing it. Ali, I've heard that comment about the two cultures. Yeah. Yes, if you are being opposed, you will not be opposed openly in a Ghanaian culture. You'll be opposed insidiously. Yes. Hello, good morning. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, by the grace. By the grace. By the grace. We attend funerals, sit there, smile, look there, humble, this, everything flowing. And then something else is going on behind the scene. Yeah. So you, you can have terrible orangus. Ghanaian orangus, terrible. And Nigerian orangus too, also terrible. But more open. You know that it's happening. In fact, you'll be expecting it to happen. <laughs> Are you listening? Yes, yeah. So craftiness must end in our lives. Every dishonest, hidden thing. Do you see? I'm speaking especially to those of us young people that want to be in the ministry. You get what I'm saying? Try to bring your life out of hiding and dis- denounce all things that are some way. So that from now, even if up to now, you have been, when people see you, they think they are looking at a tree in the forest. But you, when they come closer, they say, ah, it's a human being. 
So you've mixed up with the trees. That's what Adam and Eve did. He said they were standing in the midst of the trees in the garden. So you see the trees that you see the the forest. And forests are like that. From afar, it looks like one tree. But as you get there, I said there are many trees. Then as you get even closer, I see that one is a man. Or some of them are men. (laughs) Yes. And he heard the voice of the Lord God walking. And the Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. They wanted to be trees now. You will never be found in dishonesty again. Amen. Would you like to put a dishonest person in charge of your money? No. Yes, the person has no shame to eat. You know, Mike Meadow was describing somebody who stole his money. He said, if the person stole forty thousand or seventy thousand dollars, a lady without blinking an eye, she was just just standing there like that. She just stole the money like that, without blinking an eye. She was a thief. Yes, no blinking like that. She's just plain face. Yes, and you see, such people are able to infiltrate and be in the ministry. And they can do things without blinking. No one suspects them. When you watch films, you see where the, the traitor is acting. You see that the person is trusting the traitor. Then you'll be saying, no, don't tell him. Don't tell him. Yeah, don't tell him. <laughs> then you will tell the person and they will get worse. They say, yeah. They said, this person, he trusts the person. Don't trust this person. Don't. You'll be shouting in your chair. Don't trust the Don't. And then you will also try because he doesn't know. You'll never be called a monkey traitor. Tanarama sata unarata. You never be a monkey unarata. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Do you want it? No. no. Monkey. <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> okay, let's go on, please. Otherwise, we get stuck here. Take unto you the whole armor. Stand with your loins, get about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, faith is a shield of protection. So everybody... Take note of this amazing revelation. I didn't even know. When the devil attacks you eh, with that, okay, the way to quench attacks, okay, is faith. Amazing. It is a way to put out fires. It is a way to put out fires and darts. Read it from yourself. Above all, using, taking the shield of faith, which means using faith, okay? Using faith, with, with, with using faith, you can quench all fiery darts. And one of the things about the devil's attacks is that they are spreading things. Fire, it lands on and then it catches fire and spreads to every other thing. Yes. So that's why fire is a danger. When anytime people see fire, the danger is that even from the next house, it can come to your house. When September 11 happened, it was not only the Twin Towers which came down. The next and the next and the next, they were all spots. Because it spreads. 
until you, so you, you even have to see what has been spoiled. So, the way, and I'm telling you, this is a clear thing. Now the enemy has attacked what you will do. Faith, according to the Bible, not my idea, but I can't see demons. But according to the Bible, faith is a quencher. Now, if you wouldn't mind, take my book, Faith Secrets. You'll find out that almost every chapter is helping you to see how it is quenching the fiery darts of the enemy. Let's just start with chapter 1. If you wouldn't mind, if you have your book, if you don't have your copy, fine. But I prefer you to not look at any gadget so that I have the right to, to look at, to preach to people who are not looking at their phones. It's a right. Yes. Chapter 1 says, faith is obedience and obedience is faith. <laughs> and it says, faith is equated to obedience in the Bible. And you can see from several examples which are in chapter 1 that faith is obedience. Deuteronomy 9.22 says, at Tabera, all right, you provoke the Lord. Likewise, when the Lord sent you to Kadesh Barnea, saying, go and possess the land, all right, you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, and you believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. You believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. So you don't believe, you don't obey. <laughs> I found other people who don't believe, don't obey, because they don't believe what I'm saying. And the Bible is saying that, are you attacked? Beautiful. Starting to obey God is going to start to put out those things. It's going to start the end of that attack. Yes. Another verse, 1 Peter 2, 7. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which are disobedient. You see, those who believe is like this. But to the disobedient, the stone which the builders allowed, the same is made ahead of the corner. A stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Amen. Amen. And to you which believe, which is faith, those who believe he is precious. On the other hand, those who are disobedient, so the opposite of believing is disobedience. And I'm telling you that faith puts out fires and puts out blocks, things that are supposed to wipe you out. So whatever has gone wrong in your life, that is to wipe you out. Start obeying certain things and watch and see those fires will go out and the thing which was meant to strike you out will not work. It will not work. Obedience is faith and faith is obedience. So if your disobedience has brought poverty into your life and your lack of believing, then start believing. That means you start lifting up the shield of faith and it starts blocking the fiery darts that are coming your way. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 1. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. She obeyed not. She did what? Obeyed. She obeyed not. She trusted not. She received not correction. She drew not near to her God. So you see, all these knots put the verse back there, are clear. She obeyed not, received not correction, trusted not, trusting not, obeying not, not being corrected. And somebody who doesn't want to be corrected, he also doesn't believe, also some way. Because God's love goes with his correction. You know, the Bible says that God 
is a merciful God, showing mercy to thousands, do you see? And he will not let the wicked or the sin go unpunished. So his punishment goes with his love. Yes, his mercy and his punishment, they are together. So when in Zephaniah 3 and verse 1 and 2, you are not obeying, not trusting, are you with me? Not receiving, not being corrected. Also, of course, why would you be corrected when you don't believe things? How can you even be corrected? It's even worse. Well, when correcting people who are some way don't want to be corrected. They develop bad attitudes for being corrected. I once lashed my son and... Um, you don't know which one it is. <laughs> and after the lashing, his face was bad attitude. So I called him back and I lashed him for the face. Straight in the face. <laughs> yes. Zephaniah chapter 3. She received not correction. She trusted not in the Lord. She obeyed not. Hmm? Hebrews 11, verse 8. By faith, when Abraham was called to go out to a place which he should receive, obeyed. You see, by faith, when he was called, he obeyed. Obey is faith. Faith is obeying. Obeying is faith. And faith starts putting out things. I don't want to let it be mystical to you. Obeying is faith. Trusting starts to end crisis. It ends issues. It ends calamities and catastrophes. When it says, that has come here, that has come here, that has come here, fire all around, smoke, fear. Start obeying God in things you don't obey and see the effect of it. Faith is obedience. And obedience is faith. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Yes. So, chapter 3 says, faith is obedience in little things. Yeah. Faith is obedience in little things. In 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 26. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, it is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Wherefore the Lord has delivered him unto the lion, which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which spake unto him. This prophet had been sent to prophesy against Jeroboam. Jeroboam is the guy who came after Solomon. And he was doing the wrong thing. And God sent him, go and prophesy and perform a sign and a wonder. And he did. And he told him, do all this and don't eat bread in Bethel. That's all. Just have lunch in another place. He risked his life to give this great prophecy. But he was also given a small instruction for his dinner. Do not have the dinner in the city of Bethel. Eat your dinner outside. This was a far easier. Sometimes when you think of the things that God tells us, the easy ones are the ones that we don't even like to do. It's true. <laughs> the easy ones are the ones that we don't like. Like, it's not a beye instruction. It's not what beye I don't know what it means. You can check from the Google. Google it and see. The prophet obeyed the big instructions, but failed to obey the minor instructions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And behold, there came a man out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar and said, O altar! That says the Lord, a child shall be born to the house of David, Josiah by, by name, specifically by name. 
And upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense. And men's bones shall be burnt on thee. And he gave a sign. He gave what? A sign. This is your big ministry. The same they say, this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are on it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which cried against the altar, he put forth his hand from the altar saying, lay hold on him. And his hand which he put forth dried up so he could not pull it again. And the altar was rent and the ashes poured out according to the sign which the man of God had said. Is it not a big ministry? Eh? Against the king and the army and everything. The king spread his hand on the, the hand goes that. And then the, he said the ashes will fall down. And the altar got broken and fell down. Just as he said, this is the sign. I mean, this is a big thing. Can you imagine going to a president to go and prophesy something like this? People don't like these type of things. And he prophesied and gave the name of the man who is coming called Josiah. That is a man called, and Josiah came. Josiah came later. I mean, I have somebody who wrote a will two years before the person was born and said that on, there shall be born a son. Do you see? <laughs> and he will be, and this will be his name. And so they put the, the name in the will. Yes. And based on that, they went to court for more than 20 years. Yes, because how can you write somebody's name, who, somebody who has not been born? And you are saying, what are we to even be a boy or a girl? You don't know. And the lady was almost 50, 40 something years old. So how can you say that she is going to give birth? Hello? She is going to give birth in two years. At her age. And it will be a boy and this will be the name. So, because the boy was alive when the will was being read in 1980 something the boy was there do you see so they challenged the will ah, they say it's a forgery so that's the kind of thing this prophet did he said somebody is coming it's called Josiah <laughs> it's going to come one day and he's a wild man he's going to burn all the priests and burn their ashes on this altar all these things he did, and he, 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 was, he was so powerful. And he said, just when you are eating, don't eat here. Don't eat here. It's like, say, don't eat here. Just go to another place to eat. That's the part he didn't obey. And when he was going, somebody called him back. So, come and, the old prophet says you should come and eat. He said, no, no, he's insisting that you should come and eat. So, he went back and he ate. After this wild, wild science and wonder, which the old prophet had not done. When an old prophet even tells you to do something which is contrary to the word of God, don't do it. It, doesn't, it cannot go higher than the word of God. He went back and it cost him his life. What small things are you disobeying that are allowing fires to spread in your life? Faith is established to be obedience and obedience is faith. Believe that even eating in battle has some importance. You have to believe it. It is important. It is, it is, it is the trivializing and reducing in your head instructions which are given by God. That is what makes people trivialize and disobey. You have to trivialize it to disobey it. And so, don't dishonor this. Don't do this. You have to bring it down from its high lofty place. And bring it to something that's not important. I've done all this. God has used me. So don't eat here. So that one too has a relevance in the whole ministry. So brothers and sisters, I can see that spreading of fires, amen, amen. is going to continue in your life when you don't obey God's commandments. Faith is obedience. And obedience is faith. I'm reading chapter 4 now. Faith is to obey pleasurable commands. <laughs> you can read the book yourself. Yes. You can read it yourself. What are the pleasurable commands? Genesis chapter 18. Now Abraham and Sarah were old. Well stricken in age. 
and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. That means no more monthly periods. She was now an established old lady. Established what? Old lady. lady. Her time was what? Past. Young chicks were moving around, except Sarah. All the hair on her body was white. Yes. Yes. And therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, like a lot of Christian wives, saying, after I am wax old, shall I have pleasure? Shall I have pleasure? This is the attitude of 90% of Christian wives. Yes. After they've got husband, ring, this, that. Shall I have pleasure after? They don't say after I'm wax old. No. But they are old in their heads. So they are saying the same message. Yes. Shall I have pleasure? If you want pleasure, but shall I have pleasure? I don't need no pleasure. I mean, she, 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 she was offended. Sarah was offended. She was not happy with this instruction at all. Meanwhile, you've got a problem. A fiery dart of barrenness has been thrown at you. And the fiery dart of barrenness, the fire and the trouble that it has brought to your life and your existence can be ended by doing something that can be done. Shave off those white hairs from your, your head or your body. Put on a wig and change it to black. <laughs> get a dress and try to see if you can get the old man by the power of God. <laughs> Look, Sarah gave birth to Isaac not because she was a virgin whom the Holy Ghost moved on. It is Mary who was a virgin. The others were not virgins. Yes. Mary was the virgin, not Sarah. She, she did not have by the Holy Ghost give birth to Isaac. I can see many times when God gives instructions people that are pleasurable, do this. Do this. No, they don't. That's my experience. And then the fiery dart of adultery, fornication, divorce, unhappiness, treachery, and all other things. They are fat, the darts are moving. And now prostate diseases and other HIVs and more things coming. Faith is obedience. And obedience. I've not yet seen people that have certain problems who don't open the door to the enemy by disobeying small things. I've not yet seen one before. Yes. Chapter 5. Faith is to go forward. Yes. Yes. Going forward ends a lot of issues. Going forward, that's what ends a lot of issues. Yes. Going forward ends a lot of issues. Look. If you want to wipe out certain things, you have to learn to have faith. And faith is to go forward. Look, I'm reading from my book. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Verse 22. At Tabera and at Massah and at Kibroth Hatava, ye provoked the Lord to wrath. Why? Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you, then you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord and you believed him not. You believed him not. No hacking. When he said, Go forward. When he said what? Go Go forward. That's faith. Move forward. Many, many 
attacks are quenched by just going forward. It's true. Just let's move on to the next chapter of our lives. Amen. Amen. Move forward to the next chapter of your life. And you quench that attack that seems to be ready to finish you off. He said, when the Lord said to you, go, you rebelled and believed not. You didn't believe in the go, going instruction. Just move forward. I will say for myself, eh, perhaps one of the greatest anti-satanic shields that have been lifted up in my life over the years has been go forward. When he has said to me, okay, move. Go here. Go here. It ended many fiery darts. Oh, yes. When, go and do a crusade. It ended certain things. Go first love church. Go, go. Start again. Dude, it ended certain things. Go here. It ended this. Move to this place. It ended certain attacks. Sometimes our places I've been to have camps. The people develop an air of familiarity. No, so go here also to have a camp. Go here to do this. Reach out here. Go forward. It was the, and it like that. That thing became like nothing. You know, when I was in Geneva, Geneva is the first branch of the church. Geneva. And when I was there to start the church in 1982. 1982? 92. 92? Yeah. When I was there to start the church in 1992. Are you with me? I was staying in a hostel. And the man next door, every, the man next door, everybody in the hostel was a, a white man. But the man next door had a typewriter. And he, had, he put the typewriter on the wall that separates his room from my room. And he used, he used to type into my room. That's, I just remember that scene. And I was thinking that I would just allow these people, you know, if you do make any noise, you see how they So He was typing into me. I was in that room lying on the bed when the Holy Spirit said to me, go and start a church in London. I said, me? London? How? Why? Because there were already great churches even from Ghana that had even gone to London. I didn't know the kind of attack that was coming to our church in Geneva. Eh? <laughs> That's 92. 1993, when the Lord, I was praying that when this man was typing. The Holy Spirit was saying, go to London and also go and start a church. Go to London, go to London. Go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward. When the enemy came like a flood, so nine, that's 92, October, and I was around, that, the, around 92, then. 1993, 14th May, was my birthday, I was 30 years old, and I was in London starting a church, in obedience to what God had told me. I didn't even know what it meant. Yes. When the enemy came, attacked, criticized, around goose days, hey! I just thank the Lord that go forward has been a quencher of many, many fiery darts of the enemy. So what that is in your life? You know, today when I think of, let's say, Zambia crusades, I just, I've forgotten about it. The recent one is Abidjan. All I think of KJB crusade or Kintampo crusade, I've forgotten about it because more crusades have happened since then. I can't even remember. Nigeria was even 10 years ago that we were there. 10 years have gone, gone by since we were in Nigeria. You forget as you move forward, whatever the enemy seems to be doing or whatever. He, said, he becomes insignificant at the Bible. Wow. You are like some wow. dead dog who is backing his last few backs before you finally are thrown into the dustbin. Katamarabasa. All dogs that are backing against you shall end up in the dustbin in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
Faith is to go forward. If you are a man of faith, you must move forward. Move forward. And exercise your faith by moving forward. Are you with me? Yes. Now, mata paro mandala baba. Halo kataba taro mandali be. Tero mandala ba. Tarabandala ba. Tamorandali ba. Chapter 6. Is what is in the book. Faith is a small step of obedience. Yes. You can read it after church. Faith is what? A small step of obedience. Isaiah 29 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand? From them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept shall be upon precept. Line upon a line. Here a little and there a little. Are you a man of faith? Do not say that it's impossible to walk by faith. God has made it possible for you to walk by faith by creating a walk that involves many little steps. Faith is not the obeying of one huge, near impossible jump. No. Faith is rather the obedience of one small step. Think of all the heroes of faith God used. Most of them took one small step. His commandments are quite possible for you to obey because they always have one step at a time. Small step. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 2, it says, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. You see, his commandments is not something, you know, huge. Yes. Before God told Abraham to kill Isaac, he had told him to leave his father and his mother and told him to leave his country and told him to believe in that one day his descendants will, have, uh, will come out of Egypt and that he would have this and that. Different things. All of it. Isaac was the last. After that, it was marriage and her children throughout. Isaac was the last big one. So those who are things of God will say, go to the uh, whatever field. You are in Birmingham. You are in Accra. You can't witness next door. You can't even organize some few people. And you say, God has sent you. You will be there on, on a mission to El Salvador. Do you, do you know what is in El Salvador? Do you know what is in Honduras? They are declared the most dangerous countries in the whole world. Huh? Start right in Dansoman or wherever you are. Sampaman. You can't start online. Online, where you can't start was center. Was center that does not involve movement. His commandments are not grievous. His commandments are something small. That's what I've noticed over the years. God hasn't told me like big things that I can't do. Usually there's something to do that takes me to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. To the next. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what did Rahab do to be called a hero of faith? Huh? Huh? Rahab the harlot gave her house to visitors. She provided the services of a harlot to Israeli spies. One at a time. There were 12 spies. This was something she was used to doing. Maybe for you it would have been a very big step. But for her, she was there to service clients. When new clients came, she said, no problem. If you've ever seen prostitutes, whatever, they kill. Sometimes they sit, you see the door here, they, they sit in a row like that. They're all waiting. Different men. Big stomach, small stomach, this, beards, without beards, whatever. They sit in rows with a chair. There are chairs, like a clinic. People going to a clinic. You see them all sitting there waiting. And they go next, and they have a time that if you pay this amount, you you can only stay a certain amount of time. No matter what you are doing, you must finish within this time and and go out. Then they clean, then the next person comes. You've not seen it before? You've not been to prostitute before? I hope not. (laughs) 
Hey. <laughs> the only difference for Rahab was instead of Jericho guys, it was Israeli guys. So the step was not very big. It's almost in line with your work. And when they were going refreshed in the morning, she said, remember me. Remember me. I gave you everything. Food, this, I kept you. You know, one day I watched a film. (laughs) And the lady in the film, she was like a star. She came to marry her husband. When she arrived, her husband was killed the day before she arrived. So it was a tragedy as she arrived. Hey, and the music they play in the film, it was something. So nobody knew who she was. She was coming with a train. And she came to the house. When she came to the house, the whole house was for her because she was the wife. Everybody has been killed. Now, later in the film, a man came there. When he saw, he said, you are here. Everybody in Louisiana is missing you. They they know her. She said, everybody has been asking of you. Because she was a prostitute from Louisiana. Every man in Louisiana knows her. She cares for her. And when, when she left, the whole thing changed. They were not happy. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> the city was affected. Kamashakaya. <laughs> Are you listening to me? It's the oldest trade. Yes. He said, Hi, hey, you. They are all missing you over there. I think it was Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana. They miss you there. So this spy, the guys remembered her. She told her, Remember me, oh, I help you. I loved you. I cared for you. I kept you overnight. You were okay. Huh? I serviced you. (laughs) You don't want to think about that part. Yeah, you you holier than thou. Holier than thou. (laughs) Airbnb. Amen? Wow. What did Abraham have to do to be included in the heroes of faith? He had to have sex with his old wife. A small step. Not so big. What did Moses have to do to become a man of faith? Throw a stick on the ground. I'm sure he has thrown down many sticks before. (laughs) This time he was to do something like that, but this time with faith. Your instruction from God, remember, amen, is always a small step of faith. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? And it goes on and on and on and on. Many, many things. But every bad situation is reversible by faith. Chapter 19. Every bad situation is reversible by faith. Jesus, groaning in himself, came to the grave uh, and said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Every bad news and bad situation, dead and stinking thing of your life can be reversed by faith in God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That means it can be reversed by a small step of obedience. It can be reversed by something that is not a big step even. Can be reversed. Said I not unto thee that if thou 
thou shouldest believe, which means what? Faith is obedience. Faith is small. Obedience is small. Faith is obedience in little steps. If you take little steps, did I not say that you will see my glory? I told you. It's time for us to believe in the little steps. Sometimes to even become a great man of God is just to go and rather get a job in another town. Not even to be full time, but even to go and get a job or even to go to a university in another nation. To go and learn a language. A small step will turn you into a national hero one day. Uh, people are waiting for big things to do. Said I not unto thee that if thou shouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Every negative thing in your life can be reversed by faith. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. Faith will block every arrow targeted at you. Oh yes. Anything targeted at you. That has targeted you and located you. You know, you may not know, eh? you may not know when I say targeted. eh? I will tell you that eh? if you are a precious life. You see, one day after I had an accident, I read in a book about near-death experience. They said that anybody who God uses, usually you will find out at a point that there's some plan or almost something that a person can relate to that this thing could have quenched me. Yes. To have wiped me out. Because for an arrow to come, it means you must have been located and spotted. And the thing is shooting for you. It's like it, it seems to know you. It seems to know where you are. Because if I shoot here, it's different. 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 So the thing must be fixated on you. There are demons who have eyes fixed on you. Eyes fixed on you. They, 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 they look at you longingly and then they target. Ow. But faith will block everything that seems to want you in particular to be wiped out. Have faith in God. Move forward when he says move forward. <laughs> take the little steps when he says take the little steps. Chapter 22. Faith will put out every fire that is burning in your life. Faith. What is burning? Fire. Look, if you've ever come, when we did a bonfire during the battle of the Lord, that's when I respected fire. That was when I respected fire. The destructive nature of fire. Pray you never, even to breathe. I've been in the fire before where I thought it, I didn't know what it was. I, I ran through and I inhaled small. I understood why people die from breathing. They cannot breathe. If a little smoke goes into your lungs, it closes up. Hebrews 11.33 who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, and quenched the violence of fire. Fire in your life is quenched by faith. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Believe God. Obey him. It will quench fire. Fire. The violence of fire is quenched by faith. And faith comes by hearing. The more you hear the word, the more you listen to preaching, the more you give yourself to obeying God, the more it's putting out fire in your life. When I stand here to preach, when I stand to preach and it's like, I should preach about something that is relevant. Something which is vocational. Something which is a a life skill. Something that will help people's lives to to, to their practical businesses. It's like what I'm preaching is not realistic or practical. You see? It's like preaching the word rather, okay? 
it quenches the fire that wants to dry, wipe out um, all, all churches. All the churches you see being built all over the place, it would, they would have been wiped out by fire if I have not obeyed God to preach about shepherding and to encourage people in camp meetings to serve God with their lives. Like how these people were singing on the, on the song there, I can't go without your presence. And I'm going on a mission. I'm going. And I'm going with your presence. To encourage the young people. The fires would have burnt all the churches and the whole ministry would be down. Obeying God. Obeying God. It quenches the fires. Obeying God. It wipes out things that are spreading. Look at the fiery dart. Amazing. It's coming. Targeting you. Paramakasata paramandola. Matare boshakada. By faith, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not burn. You will not burn. Your skin will not burn. By faith, a bullet will not enter you. By faith, the bullet will miss your heart and every vital structure in your body. Just two weeks ago, one of our pastors and son were, they were attacked by armed robbers. They shot them. And the bullet entered right here, the chest. And I saw it myself. Turned right. The bullet turned right. Missed the heart. Missed the other structures. And came out on the side of the chest. I'm robbers in Ghana. Marakata. It is written here. It said, by faith, a bullet will not enter. By faith, the bullet will miss your heart and every vital structure in your body. By faith, terrorists will not find you. By faith, armed robbers will not enter your dwelling place. The eye of the evil one who seeks to destroy you will go blind before he gets to you. The plans to invade your house will fail. By faith. By faith, you will escape every single attack. Every violent and forceful effort to remove you from this earth will not succeed. Do you believe in the word of God? Yes. So keep listening to messages. In, in any message you listen to, whether it's about faith or not, it increases your faith. Because faith comes by hearing. This is what you hear. Anything you hear increases by faith. Once is the word. Soak in the word. Let your faith be what? Huge. Let your faith be what? Huge. And I see the enemy is very sad to hear this message today because it's the quencher. As for attack, he will be attacked. If you think you are going to, Kenneth Hagin used to say, he used this phrase, if you think you are going to float around in life on flowery beds of ease, then you are mistaken. There is nothing like flowery beds of ease. Uncle James used to tell me, the devil does not attack a dead piece of wood. He said, because you are active and you are serving the Lord, that's why the devil is attacking. That's what Uncle James used to tell me. The devil does not attack a dead piece of wood. It's because you are not a dead piece of wood, useless to God. That's why the enemy looks at you and says, ah, have you, have you taken this one out? You don't leave him. Don't leave her. Don't leave her. It's, too, it's not good for us. <laughs> Faith is to go forward. Faith is to go. Maybe if you have stayed at the same spot, it would have finished you. By stepping one step forward, it goes to the back. And says, ah! Keep moving. Keep obeying. Keep obeying little things. Yes. My father in Malaysia, one of the fathers God gave me, the other day I was thanking him. I said, thank you for the dinners you had with me. Dinners that I, I was eating with you. Thank you for the lessons. He, 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 he said to me, I am overwhelmed by your humility. I said, thank you for the lessons at the dining table you gave to me many times, I told him. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you for all those little things. Taking me around the city of Kuala Lumpur. Showing me this. Taking me up to a rotating restaurant. 
to look at the city, pointing me out who are the owners of things. Thank you for giving me money to go shopping with my wife, looking after me as though I'm important. Thank you. Little things. Thank you for telling me to preach in my church. And that when I preach in my church, people will know who is the owner of the church and who is the, the leader of the church. You know, many little things, they make a big difference if you believe. If you believe. The day he told me, he said to me, he gave me some advice, health, because I wasn't well. He said, no, no, be careful. This you have to be, if you are young, if you grow older, it will, it will not be good. May God give you the grace to hear and believe and obey so that you escape and quench all fiery darts of the enemy. Lift your hand and thank God. Papa. Everyone stand, please stand in your house, stand up in your room. Don't sit down. Don't, don't make lunch whilst I'm preaching, please. And don't eat at this time. Be in the presence of God. Makabaroma sandala mamandala ba. Pakabarundala masito lebeke barabale de. Mentala makabaranda li baba. Halaga kabarando la ma. Paze de le mambara bakapalo de bede de. Menta ba 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 la mandala. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your kindness, your love, your power. Your grace, faith is an unstoppable force. Faith will quench the violence of fire. Faith, mataga balado masada, is obedience, and obedience is faith. Faith in God, Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise that no matter what the enemy seems to have done, we remember your word which says. Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. We receive the glory. We believe in every little step and every little word you speak to our hearts. We take possession of your word which says, Go forward. Go forward. Kaba 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 lada. Kaba kaba koba kaba landala. Go forward. Go forward, my son. Go forward, my servant. Go forward. Balana kaba sumbala mananda hamorana. We give you praise and we give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, we want to give your life to Jesus. What does say, Pastor? Please pray with me. I want Jesus to change me and save me. If you are here like that, wherever you are, whatever situation you are in, it's an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Savior. You want to give your life to Jesus? Then, pray this prayer with me. Put your hand on your heart like this and pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I am a sinner. I know I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. Please wash away my sins. Make me a new person. Through the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me. Have mercy on me. Please write my name. In the book of life. Thank you Lord. For saving me. Today. I love you Jesus. I thank you Lord. For saving me. Help me to serve you. Help me to love you. Help me to obey you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. If you pray this prayer to give your life to Jesus, there is a number on your screen right now. Plus 233-560-333079. You want to give your life to Jesus then please send us a message and we are going to get back. If you are lonely and you need comfort, help, you need a friend, 
also the same number works. Contact us. Your loneliness is going to be healed. You know, I'll tell you something. I was very lonely when I was in secondary school. I was in boarding school. I had not eaten 99% of the foods that were being served in the school before. I went to secondary school. I was 11 years old or 12 years old. I was very small. And there were grown-ups 19, 20, 21 years old. Bullies and wicked people. You know? And I suffered. I was alone. But when I found Jesus, my whole life changed. So, although I suffered like a prisoner on Alcatraz Island, you get it? Through Christ, do you see? I've even forgotten those sufferings. I've forgotten the bullying and the beatings and the nights of torture that I experienced on that island place because of Christ. So if you are lonely and you are not having happiness through discouragement, I want to encourage you to contact us on this number and somebody is going to talk to you. Christ gives you another family apart from wherever you are. Jesus, the blood of Jesus is stronger than any other blood. And blood connects us as families. So through the blood, we are connected no matter the nations we come from. And that is why whenever you meet a Christian, it's as though you've known each other for a long time. So send us a message right now. Every lonely person, every isolated person, every person who is discouraged, send a message right away and somebody is going to call you or text you back. Or whatever, somebody's going to do whatever they have to do. And you are going to be surprised. When Christ becomes your family, you know, uh, that's, a, that's why we talk about, have you given your life to Christ? Are you in Christ, in him? We are in the family.